morning. So uh, anyways, so much interest in what I, what I eat these days. So figured I'd show you all a full day of eating. Uh, I'm going to start the day off doing fasted and some vacuums and then head home and show you all what a uh, full day of eating looks like. This was uh, the most requested uh, video whenever I asked y'all what y'all wanted to see. So here we go. I just think it's funny how all pieces of cardio equipment tell you to enjoy your workout when you press start. Like some kind of sick fucking joke right before you do it. But uh, anyways, so yeah, full day of eating. Figured I'd give you all an overview of what we're doing as I knock this out. But I'm um, headed into the off season. This is going to be the first off season I've ever had that, you know, just growth is not the main goal. Um, you know, I've gotten most of my body where it needs to be size-wise to be competitive, um, with the exception, in my opinion, being my back. So what does that mean diet-wise? It means I am not force-feeding myself into oblivion for like a year straight like I did last off-season. Um, gonna keep things much tighter this off-season. It's a short one. We'll be starting prep probably in 10 to 12 weeks. Uh, for those two shows that I'll be doing, so haven't announced those yet. Not going to announce them quite yet, but I am doing two shows this year. Um, so yeah, as far as the diet goes, kind of sticking with the cord of I'm not having to force feed myself into oblivion. My uh, appetite has stayed a lot better post Olympia post show than it ever has in the past. Usually by now, my appetite's kind of fizzled out because I've always rebounded real hard. Always really pushed food, always really tried to grow after shows because it's a great time to grow. You know, your squoze out sponge, drop it in water, right? So, this off season's different. Um, you know, A, not drinking as much uh, whey protein. Last off season, uh, most of prep. And if I'm being honest with y'all, since I started bodybuilding, so 2015. I've drank in at least three of my meals, the protein source has been whey isolate. So, you know, I don't know how much that was hurting, but, you know, obviously my midsection was a little bit of an issue this last off season, so eating a lot more whole food, seeing if that's going to make a difference. Um, the last year, with all of the food drinking being sensationalized, I really wanted to touch on this. Um, you know, that was not what I thought everyone should be doing. I thought that was, you know, me in my specific scenario, eating 6,000 calories a day for 10 months straight. And I got to the point where, you know, my body was fighting me on the food, so I started drinking it. Lesson learned. Um, trying to think what else, so. I guess the biggest changes um, for, you know, the diet right now, obviously pulled whey protein as the protein source out for two meals, put chicken in, so I'm eating chicken uh, pre-workout, and then either chicken with added fats or steak for breakfast, kind of depending on what I'm feeling taste-wise right now. But, yeah, do I feel like it's made a huge difference? Not yet. But obviously we're only about a month and a half into the year, so I'm interested to see what it'll do. Something that I think has made a huge difference, and this is a, not a diet thing, but something I'm gonna do right after I get done with this, is daily fasted vacuums. So I've been doing, you know, 10, hold them till I can't hold them anymore. You know, gasping, looking like I'm shitting myself in the corner of the gym vacuums every morning. and. Uh, the amount of difference that's made already has been really cool to watch and really encouraging. So keep on doing that every morning. You know, keep on doing the cardio every morning. Stay tight, keep my digestion good. Really looking forward to it. But anyways, we we'll to knock the rest of this out. I will see you on the corner for vacuums and we'll go home and cook that first meal. All right guys, so not cardio out. Uh, right now I'm doing 20 minutes on the stairs, level five fasted every morning. Uh, you know, it's kind of keeping a good routine. It's not enough to impact me gaining muscle at all, but definitely is enough to, you know, mitigate fat gain and uh, 
I'm gonna set myself up to have a good appetite and digestion for the day. So I've really been enjoying keeping the fasted in. Uh, like I said, for if nothing more than the routine of it. But anyways, like I mentioned on the stairs, something I think has made a big difference for my waistline already is daily vacuum. So this is separate from the ab work that I'll do three or four times a week. It's built into the training days, but you know, it's really important that if you're gonna be doing these, you'd be doing them fasted. So, and I do them right after I get done on the stairs and I'll do uh, five, you know, bent over and then five standing, just pulling it and holding it as long as I can, pulling it to failure. So, like I said, I've noticed a big difference already. Um, not gonna lie, it sucks and it's tedious and no one likes holding their breath and squeezing their muscles, but it is what it is. So, knock those out, then we'll go home and cook breakfast. And I know it looks so funny. I'm sure like every person in this gym thinks I like randomly come in the corner and like try not to shit myself or hand an have an aneurysm for like five minutes a day every day. But it is what it is, right? Ooh. It's breakfast time. Let's get out of here. It is breakfast time in the Labrada house. So the dogs eat before we do because they don't shut up if we don't feed them. But yeah. So first meal up is uh, chicken and rice. So been doing air fried chicken lately. Um, just been, she's been cooking it for me unseasoned. In the air fryer? Huh? In the air fryer? It's been on the stove. You cook it in the air. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, she did it in the stove last time, just kidding. But uh, yeah, we do it like unseasoned and everything because, um, you know, we're blessed to be in a position where we get to cook all of our meals fresh. So I'll take the chicken and dice it up and pan fry it with rice and either been doing uh, like soy sauce or uh, honey and almond butter, depending on the meal. So this is the soy sauce meal. So throw a uh, rice pack in the microwave been eating these for three or four years now. Um, I like them a lot, especially right now whenever I'm eating 300 grams of rice a meal because they're 300 grams on the dot. And I will say I've weighed them probably like 100 times over the last five years and they've always been between 298 and 302. So shout out to Veet for actually uh, doing what they're supposed to. But I'm gonna grab the chicken. And the soy sauce. And then this meal, we're actually doing 200 milliliters of fresh squeeze, not from concentrate, never pasteurized, actually just orange juice, orange juice, and some digestive enzymes. Kicking the day off right for my stomach. So you'll have to forgive us, we're uh, just closed at our new house and we're beginning the packing process. So stuff's starting to end up in boxes and we're just getting pulled in a lot of different directions. So the house is a little bit of a mess, so it is what it is. But long story short is we got a new house and we're really excited about that. Um, yeah. Oh, I guess something I haven't mentioned yet uh, on the stairs or now yet is uh, something that we've been doing the last couple of weeks is my protein's a lot lower than it's been in the past. Um, typically I've eaten you know, between 200 and 300 grams of protein per meal, like cooked weight for the meats, whether it be you know, beef or chicken or salmon or turkey. And uh, something that we're doing right now is part of, you know, a little reset health phase is having my protein lowered significantly. 
um, 150 grams uh, a meal whenever we're doing animal protein. And it's been interesting for me because, you know, I'm training really hard right now. You know, really starting to push in the gym, logging everything again. Uh, the carb intake's starting to get high, but the protein intake's still low. But, uh, you know, my body's liking it a lot. My stomach's emptying quick. Uh, my digestion's good. I'm not gassy throughout the day. So, you know, all benefits, no downsides so far to having the protein a little lower. And, you know, it makes sense in an off-season setting where I'm not in a deficit and the carbohydrate intake is so high. Um, you don't need a ton of excess protein. So, you know, 10, 12 years into it and still figuring stuff out, which is what I like about this whole bodybuilding thing, is it's not the same for any one person, and it's on you to figure it out. So, yeah, dice that up. Throw that in there. Whole pack of rice. So this is it's what I'm done with. It's gonna be 150 grams of rice. It will be 150 grams of rice. 150 grams of chicken, 300 grams of rice. At 200 ml of orange juice, and then I actually ran out of almond butter last night. I have to go to the grocery store, so might just dump some olive oil on it to uh, replace the fats with olive oil. All carbs matter. Is it a sign that I'm getting old? That one of the more excited uh, things about this year was getting like fresh non-stick pans. Signs of the times. Okay, so this is, let me grab the olive oil real quick. It's an itty bitty one. Yes, it's so cute. Look at that. You can tell how much I use olive oil. Alright guys, so this is meal one. About to throw it down the hatch. Uh, meal two is going to be pre-training meal, so we're going to do that one up at the office. Uh, that one's going to be cream of rice, whey, and almond butter. So that's, you know, pre-training meal. It's what I've been doing for a very long time pre-training. So, you know, I look forward to that meal every day still. Um, you know, in the past, I've gotten to the point where by the end of prep, I like don't want to look at cream of rice for like six months, but it's still slapping right now. So... Really looking forward to that meal, but yeah, I'll see y'all up at the office uh, for that pre-training meal and talk a little bit about my intra nutrition as well and smash back day. Today's back in hamstring. Always a good day. All right, guys, so just got to Labrada. Gonna eat meal two. So this is like the pre-pre-meal if you want to count like the drink I drink right before I start training as a meal. I don't, but anyway, so... Like I said, during breakfast, eating chicken pre-workout right now. So have the uh, just unflavored pan fried chicken we talked about. Another rice pack. And then, you know, as I also said earlier, had a out of almond butter and haven't been to the grocery store since, you know, two hours ago. So I'm going to do olive oil. And then this meal is actually honey. So that should be interesting. But anyway, so uh, 300 grams of rice, 150 grams of chicken. Let me get the rice in the microwave. Gotta love having four microwaves, right? Let me get this on there. But uh, I've talked about this in some other videos, but never in the day of eating one, and it definitely has to do with eating. So, um, how do I feel about eating whole foods? Prior to training, um, I like how it feels in terms of my stomach once it's actually digested. It does take a lot longer to digest, though. Imagine that. So, what I've been doing is eating, you know, full two hours before it's time to train this meal. 
And then right before I train, I do the pre-workout drink that you will see, you know, before I train. But, you know, giving the food a full chance to digest has alleviated any of the fear that I had about it sitting like a brick in my stomach. Because that's honestly one of my biggest things about, you know, my food selection around training time was before I wanted it to get in there and to not affect my digestion and then to not be just sitting in my stomach while I'm training. And then after I wanted something that got in there really quickly. So, you know, whey protein fits the bill for that really well, but trying to do more whole foods. So the fix was just eat more with more time before I train. So, and this is definitely a uh, hack. If you aren't using scissors to cut your food up, you're missing out. The uh, smaller you get it, the uh, easier it is to eat. Unfortunately, I'm not blending it anymore. <laughs> Got to get it close enough, right? And uh, normally I do the almond butter in this meal. So I'll do like almond butter with the chicken and rice and then honey. And it actually tastes really good. I like the meal a lot. So replacing the almond butter with olive oil today. So I don't know how that'll be, but honey makes everything taste good. Now I have to sit here and awkwardly think of things to say for 40 seconds. So, let's talk about salt. Um, yeah, no, all jokes aside, don't be scared of salt. Uh, off season, so right now I'm putting, you know, a gram and a half of salt on every meal. Um, and that is because salt is critical to a slew of functions in your body, but you know, the meathead in me wants to make sure it's in there because it's very necessary to get a good pump and to have optimal muscle contractions. So, um, if you don't do a ton of salt, I would, you know, recommend making a exception to that rule around training time and salting your food or your pre-workout. You know, I'll literally put four or five turns in my pre-workout. You'll see me do that today, but... Yeah, salt is a good thing, not a bad thing. I talked about the rice packs already. I know that's 300 grams. So I'll throw that in there. Uh, how much honey? 30 grams of honey. So that is, you know, like roughly, do math on that real quick, like 28 ish grams of carbs from honey. Um, so, yeah, I'm gonna stir this up. Like I said, salt it. And uh, throw it on the hatch. So, this is meal two on the day. Alright, guys, so let that chicken and rice meal digest. It's been like 40 seven minutes now but we are about to mix up meal 2.5 if you want to call it it's basically just what would normally be an intra but i slam it all pre i like doing that because i don't train for that long of a time so if i like sip it while i train i a feel like i get like really bloated and have a big stomach and then b i'm you know finishing up training when i feel like you know some of it's just digesting so i just take it all to the head right before i get uh, started 
Um, as far as the actual macros go, um, we're doing 80 grams of carbs, uh, 25 of which are from highly branched cyclic dextrin and the intra, and then the remaining uh, bit from carbolin. So outside of that, the rest of it's uh, supplements that I like to do around training time, and I'll just kind of talk about them as I throw them in there. But, you know, first, like I said, we'll do scoop of the intra. So in addition to the carbs... It's got beta alanine and branch chains as well as a couple other performance ingredients. Uh, next up is 10 grams of essential amino acids. This is the new uh, sour gummy bear uh, flavor in the Pro Series. Really been enjoying these when I don't have them mixed with like seven other things. This one gets a little less uh, spicy just because of how many different things are in it. Uh, scoop of pump. It's the stem free pre-workout in the Pro Series. And then finally, five grams of creatine. And then, like I said, we will make up the rest of those 80 grams of carbs. Get my hand from the cardboard. Yeah, so I'm going to get this in me, and then I'm going to go train, and then I will see y'all back in the kitchen. I'll show y'all what my post-workout drink is, followed by the rest of the day's food. So, just finished up training. So, if uh, before we trained was meal point five, this is the other like half the meal. I'm just joking. This is very much so my post workout meal. It is a shake, and what it looks like is 80 grams of carbs from either carbolin or highly branched cyclic dextrin. Uh, today we're doing carbolin, so I get that in there, and this is just like a random tip that I have found out over the years. But with the carbolin, you want to like shake it up by itself. I don't know what it is, but if I put the protein on top of this and then try shaking it all up at one time, it'd be like a really big random clumped ball of mess. But this way, it doesn't do that. So I know uh, my diet has been sensationalized a lot in the last year. So right now, this is the only food that I am drinking. Uh, the only other time that I'm eating whey protein is with the last meal of the day, and I'm doing that in cream of rice. So not drinking it, eating it, it's just whey protein is the protein source for it. So, you know, right now we're doing two chicken meals, one beef meal, one salmon meal, and then the two whey meals. So nice balanced, uh, balanced uh, variation of protein sources. Stomach really seems to be liking it and we're making progress so I can't ask for more than that so this is meal three about to go down the hatch and then we'll do meal four like an hour hour 15 after the shake so take this to the head get home and catch up with y'all for next meal just got home from the gym slammed that shake I showed y'all which is meal three on the day so it was 80 grams of carbolin 50 grams of isolate so, been doing this meal like hour, hour and a half post training, and that is 150 grams of chicken, 300 grams of rice. So, um, started working with a meal prep company here in Houston. Their food's actually not sold nationally, so I'm not going to tell all of y'all to go check it out. But if y'all live in Houston, 
Um, I've tried all the national meal prep companies, and I've tried all like the local Houston-based ones, and Cali Cooks are the only ones that I've been able to eat for any length of time and actually not hate my life. So shout out to them for taking care of me. And if you live in Houston, I'd highly encourage you all to check them out. Um, you know, they're at most of the Texas shows, even if you're not from Houston. So try their food, long story short. But anyways, I'm going to do the uh, ultimate bodybuilder hack, and that is make the bits of food as small as possible. Throwback to the blending days. <laughs> but yeah, so we'll get this chopped up, and then post-workout, not doing any additional fats to it. Um, the meal after this one, which obviously you all see, it's a full day of eating, is a steak and rice meal. And then the last meal, which I will see too, is a uh, cream of rice, whey, and nut butter meal. So no fats in this meal, but fats in the next two meals. Um, three weeks into the off season right now, and we haven't touched the food. Uh, my weight's steady climbing as fast as we'd like it to right now. Um, I've touched on this in other videos, but... You know, this is going to be my first off-season where the primary goal is not get big as fuck. You know, the primary goal is to refine the physique, add some size in certain spots, and then really pay attention to my digestion and waistline. Um, definitely planning on presenting an entirely new, different, you know, midsection especially, but like whole package this year. So, you know, doing all the little things and checking all the little boxes right now to make sure that happens. Um, do a little bit of Korean barbecue, marinade on this. It's literally nothing but uh, water and sugar, so it's like an extra 10 grams of carbs from this, but that's okay. It is that time again. So, uh, meal five and meal six. So typically I'm eating meal five around 10 o'clock, and, um... I will either watch TV and fall asleep on the couch or just go to sleep right after I eat it. And I drink so much throughout the day, I know I always get up to use the restroom around 1 or 2. So I will actually have um, another meal made, which is meal 6. Um, so I make them at the same time. So I don't have to, like, bitch out on it and be like, no, I'm tired and I don't want to eat. So, yeah, I know myself well enough to know that that will happen uh, in the middle of the night. So I do them both right now. So meal 5 is 150 grams of sirloin and then 300 grams of rice and then meal six is going to be uh, 100 grams of cream of rice pride foods cream of rice with 50 grams of isolate and then uh, 30 grams of honey and 30 grams of almond butter with some sea salt on it so those are the last two meals of the day show y'all what it looks like when i have them done and made and then, uh, yeah, like I said, eat one of them and then probably go to sleep because I'm tired. I feel like I got hit by a car right now. We are uh, full swing on the training, full swing on everything now. It's time to uh, time to grow and improve. So if you don't feel like you got hit by a car everywhere except what you need to train the next day, or if you feel like your entire body got hit by a car, it should be an off day the next day, which it is. So... Yeah, looking forward to tomorrow being off. Get some stuff done with the house. Liv and I just closed on our new home, so trying to get as much done with that as we can before we uh, start traveling for the year. Uh, Arnold weekend kicks off a lot of travel for us, so trying to get as much done as we can. And when I say we, I mean mainly her. I'm just there for moral support. Alright, once again, make it as small as possible. Pipe down over there. Okay. And then uh, we'll do Korean barbecue on this one too. I'm one of those people that like finds what they like at a restaurant and then orders the same thing every single time until they're absolutely sick of eating it. And uh... My uh, food at home's no different. I like just wear a flavor out. Uh, it was like sugar-free barbecue and mustard for a while. Um, was soy sauce for a while, and now we're on a little Korean barbecue kick. So 
I like using the sweeter, sugary sauces in the off season because obviously in prep I can't use uh, like teriyaki or Korean barbecue because they have a lot of sugar in them. So, yeah, gonna get this all pan fried up with the teriyaki and throw it down the hatch. And then show you all uh, what the cream rice meal looks like. I'll make that as soon as I get this situated. Do a little multitasking, right? So while that heats up, we'll make meal six. And like I said, meal six is cream rice and whey protein. Stealing your water. And uh, I'm not going to talk too much about making this because I don't want to bore you all to tears any worse than I already have. But if you want to know how to make perfect cream of rice every single time, you already know I did a Tuesday tip on it. So make sure you check out the cream of rice Tuesday tip. I uh, let it cool off before I put the honey and the nut butter on it. Just consistency preference thing. So leave that out with that stuff. Pound this. Go to sleep. Wake up. Eat that one in the middle of the night. And that is a full day of eating. <laughs>